Stay tuned for a special TBN presentation. It began as a dream, a call to do something impossible. Where is the Lord leading us? What's going on? Build a network to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. And we began to walk day by day by faith. With humble beginnings and a word from God. I tell you, the glory of the Lord came down so strong. The dream took shape as a tiny TV station. We will have 100 television stations. Which grew into a network. God has charged the great TV and family to thunder the message of redemption. That could reach around the world. The whole world is getting saved! Hallelujah! Welcome to 35 Years of God's Miracles, the TBN Story. And now your host, Paul Crouch, Jr. Welcome, welcome to a very special program here in your TBN, very simply titled, 35 Years of God's Miracles. You know, when my folks started this ministry, it was based on a very simple scripture, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And that's exactly what we've been trying to do for this whole time period. As I look around this beautiful state-of-the-art studio here in Costa Mesa, California, I hearken back a little bit and I was there 35 years ago in a small little studio, maybe 20 by 30, a shower curtain as our set, two lights, and one borrowed camera. And that's literally how this ministry started. You know, my folks were not the most talented. They were not the richest, but they were simply obedient when God called them and said, we need Christian television around the world. And they very simply said yes. It is just one of the most incredible lives of faith yes. that really has, you know, that I've heard of, honestly. The destiny and purpose of Paul and Jan and this incredible story that obviously, you know what, includes you. Without the Absolutely. partnership of faithful viewers around the world for 35 years, this story would have stayed very small. It's your story too. Let's go back to the beginning. Paul was really set uh, in life, we thought. He had a wonderful job at KHOF TV, Channel 30, and was really the manager of television and radio. We decided it was time to have a, a big rally and call all of our sweet partners together. And so we, with great enthusiasm, we rented the Hollywood High School Auditorium. Just had a wonderful time. We sang and shouted and preached and prayed, and Jan and I left uh, that little auditorium that night just on a spiritual high. As we were driving out of Hollywood High, all of a sudden, I knew in my spirit that the Lord had just spoken to Paul, that he had released him from his ministry. And I just kind of looked over at him and, and he looked just right at me and he said, you'll never believe what the Lord spoke to me. And I said, yes, I would. I said, because he just spoke the same thing to me. I release you from the work that you are doing in this ministry. And we both just began to cry because we didn't, we didn't understand at all what the Lord was doing. We didn't, we didn't know that from that night on, our lives would never be the same. We went to our pastor, Savelle Phillips, at Santa Ana First Assembly of God. We poured out our heart to him and said, Pastor, could it be, could it be, could it be? And he began, he said, I'll just pray with you. I think he was as shocked that God would call us to as anybody else. I know I was. But looking back, God had uniquely prepared Paul and Jan to reach the world. Jan remembers the ministry call God placed upon her life as a young girl. In Children's Church in Atlanta, Georgia, there was a little missionary lady there, and she told us about how when she was in Africa, she needed something more in her life. She needed more power in her life. She taught us about Acts 1 and 8, Acts 2, 4, where we could ask the Father, for a very special gift. 
and he would give it to us because he loved us. So when I was six years old, Maxine Poston Hurston, missionary to Korea and Africa, said, children, we're going to believe today and something very special is going to happen. We got on our knees when that precious missionary laid her hands on me. Something special, something wonderful happened. And I was talking to my father and I knew it and I knew he understood me. I, I think it all kind of goes back to when I was a kid about 15 years of age and mother insisted that I take piano lessons. Well, as I said in one of my newsletter articles, I hated every one of them. I was not born to play the piano. That's Dino's department. And, uh, but it turns out that my piano teacher, Mrs. Bakewell in Springfield, Missouri, had a husband who was a ham radio operator. And I used to go down in Lawrence Bakewell's basement uh, when I was about 15 years of age, and we'd sit down at this big old homebrew, high-powered radio transmitter, and we'd call CQ, CQ, CQ. This is WZCGJ, Springfield, Missouri, calling CQ. And then we'd turn the high-power switch on, and we'd listen. And through the static, sometimes it would come back from, I can remember we'd get calls back from Australia and Japan and Europe and just around the world and you could walk out into the backyard where the big antenna was with a plain old fluorescent light tube and you could hold it up in the air and all of a sudden that light tube would flash on and that used to fascinate me and I'd stand there and I'd see that tube and Lawrence would be talking and the tube would flicker and flash with his voice as he modulated the airwaves. And I would say to myself, dear Lord, our voice is literally going to the other side of the world. And I know that's where the seed of taking these great tools of communication and using them to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ was born in my heart and in my spirit. At Central Bible Institute, Paul became even more involved in radio. We had fun. It was 50 whole watts of power, and we had hooked it to the water tower of the campus. We, we got the national anthem, and we, you know, we did it just like NBC with all the fanfare and all of the pomp and circumstance. And we signed her on with the national anthem. This is KCBI, Springfield, Missouri. And then my first words were, hello world. <laughs> Following graduation, Paul had hoped to become a missionary to Egypt, but that door closed and he had to settle for a job with the foreign missions department in the film library. Life was uneventful until a visit the next summer to family in Rapid City, South Dakota. At the old campgrounds in Rapid City, Jan and I met for the first time. Papa Bethany was the preacher. And we struck up a little friendship, and the next year we did a bit of courting, and the next year we got married. Following their wedding, Paul and Jan returned to Springfield. However, before too long, God would lead them back to Rapid City. Jan and I really got our television boot camp training, I guess you'd call it, here in Rapid City. I did a honest-to-goodness 6 o'clock newscast on Channel 7, KRSD-TV at the time and uh, many other things that we learned as the Lord put us through our schooling. So our roots really do go back to Rapid City for our love and relationship and then the TV ministry that the Lord has called us to. After a brief stop in Muskegon, Michigan, the Crouch family, now four persons strong, headed west to California. The radio and television pioneering continued in Burbank, Corona, and Glendale, California. But finally in 1973, God was leading Paul and Jan into their own ministry. We had talked to our pastor about the vision the Lord had given us, but we really hadn't told the congregation yet. And one night the Hawaiians were there and, and Paul and I were, Paul was at one end of the altar and I was at the other. And we were just interceding with groanings and just 
the birth of this thing was like the birth of my my sons it was just so it was so intense and the prayer was so intense and I was over here and Paul was over here and, and the Lord was speaking and doing the same thing to us but across our church and in one glorious moment our pastor just got up and announced to our congregation that the Lord was bringing forth a brand new television ministry and it was going to begin right at that altar and I tell you the glory of the Lord came down so strong that night in that church till I don't think a soul moved until one or two in the morning it was absolutely a holy beautiful wonderful time we found out about a little low-powered TV station that had gone on the air for a few months in Los Angeles California and had promptly gone bankrupt and off the air it was dark and off the air and we learned that the gentleman who owned it if he didn't get it back on the air by a certain date it would have to go back to the Federal Communications Commission the license would be canceled and it would have to be turned back to the Commission and the station would be gone when a converted warehouse became available that building at 111 Dyer Road in Santa Ana, California would become the launching pad for the fledgling ministry. It was a mighty battle to get on the air, but God provided one miracle after another. We walked into this building. We walked down the hall. There's the prayer chapel. We would walk down here and we'd see all these things in the spirit. We went through a room and opened this big door and there's where a big old computer building had been. They had jerked all the computers out. Huge open room. And they had put like 30 tons of air conditioning on it because of it being a computer building. And we saw in the spirit where God had led us to our first little television studio. And we knew it was a miracle. We knew it was from God. It was absolutely perfect for what we needed in the beginning. We began to take up tile off of the floor and prepare the building for what would become God's great television network. I'll never forget, we finally came to the day where we had to get the picture from our little two by four studio down in Santa Ana, California, up to the big antenna farm for Southern California, Mount Wilson. 5,000 feet high where all of the TV stations are and there are 12 million people under the pattern of that mighty vantage point, that mountain. We had tried for days to get the picture from our little studio up to Mount Wilson and nothing would come through. We didn't know why. We brought the equipment down, we put it together, the microwave was working just fine and then we'd put it back up on the mountain and nothing, no, not even a whisper of a picture. We finally called the telephone company that specialized in microwave communications. We said, help us, we're down here in Santa Ana and we're trying to get our picture up to Mount Wilson. Do you have any advice? And the technician said, yeah, sure do, forget it. There is a piece of Mount Wilson that juts out in the way and you'll never get your picture from that point up there. We've tried it again and again and there's no way to do it. The engineer kind of laughed and said, boy, didn't God lead them? Look here. They got that microwave up there. They got the equipment down here. God gave them this miracle building here. <laughs> and there's something in the way. What are they going to do now? They've got to be on the air May the 28th. We were so discouraged and disappointed. And for some reason, I don't even know now, I do looking back, but I found myself climbing up to the top of the building where the big microwave dish was and I laid my hands upon that big old dish and I said father you've said in your word that we could say to that mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and that if we'd not doubt in our hearts we would have whatsoever we would dare to say and I said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak to you, Mount Wilson, and I command you to move in Jesus' name. But I came down and I hurried around the side and I bumped head on into little Jan. And I knew he had been with Jesus. And he said, I tell you, honey, I don't doubt one bit in my heart that God has done a miracle. I said, let's, let's go talk to the engineer. So I went and talked. He was smoking again, as usual. 
blowing smoke in my face. I said, sir, I tell you what, we've got one more day. Tomorrow is Sunday, the Lord's Day. I said, let's all gather here at about 8 o'clock in the morning, and would you just try it one more time? We got there, we turned on the equipment, and all of a sudden that equipment fired up and we could see it turning on. And we heard a scream from Mount Wilson. He said, my God, I got it. And it's as clear as NBC. That was his words exactly before God Almighty. That was his words. <laughs> God did it. May the 28th, 1973, that first little feeble TVN program, we called it Praise the Lord way back there, uh, came on the air on bought time on a TV station we didn't even own in a little rented warehouse without any announcement, without any ads, didn't have any money for ads in the newspaper. We just simply signed it on with, let's just praise the Lord. To our astonishment, calls began to come in from all over Southern California. People just happened to tune by, I guess, and I know the Holy Spirit led many of them to stop by. And uh, they said, Paul and Jan, uh, we can't really see you. The picture's too snowy, but we can hear you. Keep up the good work. We love you, and we're agreeing with you, and we're praying for you. We were simply buying, what, two hours a night, weren't we, honey, on this little pitiful low-power television station. You know, TBN truly was started on a shoestring. We'd taken our life savings, $20,000 that we had saved. And uh, so I was, I was just arguing with God. Why does it have to be so hard? Why haven't you met our need? Why, 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 why? And again, that still small voice came up right out from my spirit. And it was a word that literally shocked me to my toenails. He said, son, it's because you have given me nothing. And I knew we'd already promised our house. It was on the line. We'd promised our cars. We had promised our silverware that I got as wedding gifts. We had promised everything we had and put them, put them on the line. God, what do you mean? I've given, I've given you my life. I've given you my <sighs> home. I, 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 we've committed everything to you. I said, even our $20,000 life savings, and God said, you didn't give me that $20,000, you only loaned it to me. And I said, okay, Lord, I'll make a bargain with you. I said, I'll give you that $20,000, and I'll tear that note up if you'll match it with an equal amount tonight. So when he said, I am giving, that $20,000, it was like I knew what a miracle that was, because everything was gone. And the phones began to ring and ring and ring and ring. And by the time that evening was over, God's people hadn't just matched it. There was an actually a $10,000 surplus. $50,000 had been pledged that night. And believe it or not, many of them literally drove down to 111 West Dyer Road the next day and literally brought their checks and their gifts down to us to meet this emergency. And uh, from that day to this, there's, there's, there's never been a need that wasn't met at TBN. Southern California Christians got so excited, just as you are, about their very own Christian television station that one day would be on the air, 24 hours a day lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. We decided finally, hey, let's don't just buy time on this TV station, let's own the whole station. Well, TBN was barely three months old when a man came out of nowhere and bought Channel 46 right out from under them. The news was devastating, but the Lord spoke to Paul and told him to get on the phone and call a man named Angel. Angel Larima was the owner of Channel 40. Paul had tried to buy the station from him before, but he had always refused. Paul called. Angel Larima said, what are you doing on the phone? Said, I just said 10 minutes ago, I'm going to sell this station. I'm tired of it. Yes, get up here. I want to make a deal with you. We signed the contract to buy the station. 
for a million dollars. He wanted a hundred thousand dollars down payment into the escrow and also the FCC had to know that this new little fledgling TV organization known as Trinity Broadcasting Network was going to be viable that would you know it would be able to pay its bills that it could actually enter into this kind of an agreement we worked and prayed and after a few months we had sixty five thousand dollars saved up into a special escrow account Lord, we we called every rich uncle we cried everything we could cry we we did everything we knew to do and that month I'll never forget all we got was the biggest phone bill we'd ever gotten in the history of Trinity Broadcasting you see God wanted us to know you know I asked the Lord one time Lord why do you seem to always wait to the last minute before you come through and save us and rescue us why Lord why now, I want to tell you, if you get serious before the Lord, He'll answer you. Did you, know, did you know most of our problem is we do too much talking and not as enough listening when we pray? I listened that day, and the Lord spoke again in that deep inner voice. And He said, Son, it's so that when the victory comes, there's never any doubt who did it. That way, He gets the glory. He gets the praise for it all. Well, we reached another crisis day, the day we had to have the $100,000 in the escrow account. And in Southern California, the banks close at 3 o'clock. It got to be 2.30. All we had was our $65,000. I'd been watching it a while. I knew they were struggling and they needed this money. I know, I think they had raised about two thirds of it or something. I think they'd mortgaged their property and I knew they needed a good sum of money and the time was limited. And of course I'd been following and each time I watched them, I, I got more interested in what they were saying and what they were doing. I felt that, the, I felt that the Lord had called them for this particular thing and I wanted to be a part of it. Finally at about 235, 240, my phone rang and my secretary said, Paul, there's a strange little man out here asking to see you. The first person I met inside is Pat Cole and asked if the Paul was in. She says, yes. And I says, I have something for him. In walked a strange looking little man that I'd never seen in my life, Scotty Scottvold. I had planned originally to, I had a nice boat, but there was a chance to buy another boat that was much nicer than this. And I, that, with that money, I could have purchase this boat, but then I th thought, no, hey, let's invest in souls. He said, Paul, um, I've been watching the program every night. He said, I really like what I'm seeing and feeling in the spirit. He said, I think it's a wonderful idea. God's people ought to own their own TV station. TV stations, he said, he had more vision than I did, I think. He looked beyond and saw the day we'd have a network like we have today. I'd have been happy just to have one station for the rest of our lives if we could ever get that down payment taken care of. And he said, the Lord spoke to me, and he was telling me this wonderful story, he told me that he was a Lutheran brother. That shocked me a little bit. I thought, my Lord, does the Lord really speak to Lutherans? You know, I just didn't seem right somehow. See, if I had been God, I would not have chosen a Lutheran to rescue my television station. I would have chosen a good Assemblies of God, brother. Maybe Church of God. At least Pentecostal. But God had to teach me a very important lesson very early on in his schooling that he was taking us through. I will never forget, I mean, I was looking at my watch, I thought, dear Lord, he's brought some kind of a gift here, but I wish he'd hurry up. The bank now, it's a quarter till, and the bank closes at three, remember? Finally, he got to the point, and I will never forget this as long as I live. And again, a million years from now, I will praise the Lord for this wonderful day. Oh, hallelujah. With a kind of a trembling little hand, he reached into his pocket, and he pulled out a piece of paper and he handed it to me. And as God is my living witness, partners, that check was $35,000. Exactly what I needed. Exactly what I needed. 
with the 65. I had the $100,000, and now it's 10 minutes till 3 o'clock. I snatched it from his hand. I didn't even say thank you. And I ran as fast as I could run. I broke every speed limit. The bank was only a few blocks up the street. I know they thought a crazy man had come through the doors. I said, get it in the escrow account quick. Now it's five minutes until three o'clock. Five more minutes and there would have been no Trinity Broadcasting Network as we know it. Five minutes. But God is never early. God is never late. He's always right on time. Oh, hallelujah. Paul Crouch was so thrilled, was so excited that, that they owned a TV station. That night, he said, people, this is your station. You now, you now own Channel 40 in Los Angeles. Channel 40 grew and prospered, but one more mountain remained. We still didn't have a permanent license from the Federal Communications Commission. And I can tell you from firsthand experience, one of the happiest days was the day I went down with my dad to the telegraph office to pick up the telegram. And I literally took the picture that you're seeing on the screen. I was a 14-year-old kid, and when we got the news that we finally owned our own license, it was truly, truly a happy day. I mean, I was happy that day. And I rushed to the telephone, and sure enough, it was Mr. Gammon, our FCC attorney, and he said, Paul, I have the best news in all the world for you. The Federal Communications Commission, Washington, D.C., has just sent you a telegram. And it's going to say, Commission Granted Transfer of the License of Channel 40, Los Angeles, Santa Ana, California. It wasn't long before TBN expanded and outgrew the Dyer Road facility. It was then that a plot of land was found on Michelle Drive in Tustin, California. Here oh is a very special picture to Jan. How there is been? Jan's little papa, Bethany and I, as we stood on the site where the new studios of Trinity Broadcasting Network would be built. One day, Paul and Papa Bethany walked through the vacant property. Papa Bethany claimed it that day as the world headquarters of Trinity Broadcasting Network. I'll never forget the day that we broke ground to build this new Studio A and B. And God is my witness, we built this great building by faith. We did not borrow a single penny. From that studio, we were able to do game shows, music programs, talk programs. But 24 hours a day, seven days a week is a lot of airtime to be filled. And we started to take the show on the road, so to speak. And all we knew to do at that point was very simply to just have church. Tonight is a very special night because guess what? Your brand new Channel 40 Trinity Broadcasting Network mobile studio is here and we are recording this particular service and you'll be able to see it on Channel 40, maybe Sunday night or at least one night this week. We're not just exactly sure, but let's thank Jesus for that new mobile studio. I can remember when I first started seeing this great Trinity Broadcasting Network almost from its very inception, that who would have thought then that the impact and the importance of this network would actually be worldwide when it first started? Let me say this to some of you precious little people. Your hearts are heavy. The years have been many. You've lost loved ones. You're sitting in the quagmire of defeat. I want to reaffirm it tonight upon the powerful authenticity of the Word of God. God is on the throne. He's going to see you through. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. But he'll go with you always, even to the end of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
the vision began to grow and the souls began to be saved and miracles began to happen a wonder of wonders on live praise, television some of you have never heard of that beautiful new birth experience and the word said you must be born again you must be I'll tell you this is the greatest moment in my whole life to see maybe three or four hundred people here ready to receive Jesus as their Savior. God has shown us, Brother Demas, Brother Paul, Brother Norm, that before he comes, there's going to be a great network of wholly owned Christian television stations. They soon began to acquire TV stations across the United States. First in Phoenix, Arizona, then Miami, Oklahoma City, New York. Little by little, that network began to take shape. Then God spoke a single word that burned into Paul's heart forever. I was praying in the den of our home, and all of a sudden, it was as though the, the ceiling of my den literally became a giant television screen, and it opened up, and I began to see an outline of the North American continent as though I were high above it. And close at my side was a brilliant light, 